Hey everyone. If you can hear me, can you please do a thumbs up emoji? All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for jumping in in the another episode of X Talks AMA. We are just waiting for our guests to hop on to the stage and then start the event. And it looks like we also have Chief here, and I'll invite him as well. Invite to speak. Osman, just a quick sound check. Hi there. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Hi. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing fine. How are you? All good. All good. Hi, Osman. How's it going? It's going great. I hope uh, my voice is loud and clear. Um, Everything's going nice. We have been uh, working on the specification of the DID, which I believe uh, today we'll have a chance to talk about. So overall, it's it's going it's going great, I can say. Thank you. And how are things there? Uh, absolutely flat out. Um, I think we're uh, as uh, as we move forward. Um, uh, it's um, you know we're looking uh, looking very good. Um, and certainly looking forward to getting you guys and hearing a lot more about uh, Omchain and the work you've been get, you've been doing over the last uh, few weeks. Absolutely, I think uh, to start off and to kick off the event, uh, we do have quite a bit of listeners with us, and uh, we are just waiting for our few guests. And until that time, I just want to say that if you guys aren't in the Leo X Discord yet, then now is the time to jump to jump into the Discord of Leo X. Our uh, Discord link will be in the bio. If not, you can uh, check uh, check out one of our posts and you will find the invite there as well. We do have quite an interesting competitions and stuff like that uh, that we are running within our Discord. And uh, all of that, all of the winnings will be paid out in the Layer 1X tokens. So now is a chance for you to get some Layer 1X tokens. And... Uh, if you have any projects that would like that would like to do an AMA with with Leo One X or any sort of influencer or stuff like that, then we do have our own. Uh, just a minute, let me find the link. Yeah, we do have our own very form for that. You can fill in the form. And we'll go from there. I'll post the uh, link to the form in the comment section so you guys can check it out. Uh, I see that we do have Carve or Carve. <laughs> uh, am I pronouncing it right? Just a quick sound check from all of our guests would be very much appreciated. Yeah, you're uh, you're pronouncing it correctly. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. I can hear you. Awesome. Do you do you mind inviting my uh, my personal account up as well? It's my handle Paul De or Delio Paul. It's the green PFP. Oh yeah, I see it. Inviting now. Done. All right. So I guess uh, we should start off by just waiting for Omchain, guys. I think Mel is here. You can also invite Anil. His username is uh, Anil Chill. Yeah, I'm looking for them in the audience now, and I'll send them an invite. All right. Thank you.
chief uh, while we search while we wait for our uh, uh, for our guests would like to give an opening statement as to what's going on within layer 1x how's the main net preparation going and stuff like that well, we've been working through a heck of a lot of things um uh, working through the uh, cx's um and uh, we can't hear you chief okay uh, have you seen uh, me now i can hear him i think twitter has been kind of iffy lately on speakers yeah oh yeah that might be an issue yeah. Right. Okay. Um, no, we've been um, working through a whole bunch of uh, of areas. Um, um, probably, I, I think uh, tonight, I think we want to um, um, focus on uh, um, on-chain and uh, Carve. So I think um, if Carve can... Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I think I, I can act as kind of an intermediary, intermediary maybe. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely down to be the focus... Super excited to be here, uh, along with Omchain as well, to to dive into everything. That'd be fantastic. We'd love to hear a lot more about you guys. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, I guess, should I do kind of an introduction here or which? Please do. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about um, uh, Carve yeah, for sure. and um, for sure. Go ahead. the core capabilities. Yeah. Yeah. So myself, you know, again, thanks for having me. I'm leading up partnerships on Carve, but you know, like like many of you in this audience building in, in Web3, we kind of wear multiple hats, right? So sometimes I'll spend some time doing community. Maybe I'll do a little bit of ops, et cetera. You get the deal. Um, Carve is building credentialing infrastructure for games uh, as well as brands to better identify potential users based on different off-chain and on-chain credentials. Um, we're both B2B and B2C, right? So that was the B2B side. On the B2C side, um, we're really giving uh, gamers the tools to build out their identity. And I see a couple of our community members in here. That's great. I'm going to post this link in our Discord in a second. But they'll come to Carve to, you know, do certain um, campaigns, participate in certain AMAs, certain game nights, and and get these attestations, right, to, to, to verify what they've done, to, the, these behavioral things. Um, and, yeah, they can bring their most proud Web2 achievements on-chain as well through tech we call generative archive tokens, usually powered through, like, the Steam API or the Epic API. But I could basically have my uh, CSGO uh, achievements on chain, for example. So we've really become the UA tool for gaming, uh, especially in this last month. We've launched uh, our data to earn campaign. Again, I'm going to post a link uh, right below here, maybe pin it above. But basically, um, this is allowing people to uh, farm what we call soul, which can later be exchanged for T uh, on TGE, upon TGE. And basically, you can farm this amount, or you can farm soul by linking your credentials again. So Happy to jump into everything. We're the number two DAP on DAP radar right now. We've got about 100,000 uh, daily active users on the Carve Play side. So it's really strong. Thank you again to Larex for having us here and for Ina for setting it up in my DMs. But yeah, super stoked to dive in. Okay, yeah. Uh, look, I, I think, um, look, let's just dive in a little bit uh, a little bit more about it. Um, uh, I'm always fascinated by uh, gaming um, um, uh, um, uh, projects. So yeah. Tell us how it um, how it operates with within uh, uh, the gaming community. Yeah, I guess the flow. Um, you know, so we have over mm -hmm. uh, two hundred and yeah, two hundred Web three titles listed on Carve that are you know done through my individual and my team's business development efforts. We work hand in hand with these games to put on campaigns, but then also break down uh, the the users that participate in these campaigns. Right. So let's say, bro, that. Um, we have a game, gets 1,000 participants. Um, right now, we're seeing traction much higher than that, but for math's sake, let's just do this. Post-campaign, we will uh, break down with the game um, the users on a genre-specific basis. So what recently happened with King of Destiny, right, from Infinity Gods, was they wanted to run a campaign on Carve uh, and then see users' Steam data for uh, players who play like Monopoly or casino social games, etc. What we'll then do is query the participants that participated for those Steam IDs um, and see who played. Uh, better giving Infinity Gods uh, an idea of the demographic of players, but then also, hey, they would probably want to target these users more specifically because um, they're the ones that likely will play King of Destiny long term. Uh, I still actually have to deliver them that today, just reminding myself on this, so I got to get that done. But that's really the flow, right? Getting games users, getting them the ability to engage them, and then also retain them with different tools we have on Carve, whether it be in-game quests or what we call carve missions. There's a lot going on to it, but yeah, 250 plus games. And I think we'll dive into this a little bit later on what we're doing to sure. gamers, but uh, a lot of web two games are listed on carve as well. Sorry to cut you off. 
No, no, absolutely fine. No, um, what I might do is um, jump across to um, Osman or um, uh, Anil and uh, just get an update um, on uh, Omchain and where you guys, where how you guys are progressing, uh, and then we'll probably swap back to uh, to Paul. Thank you. Um, so over the last few weeks, we were uh, kind of drafting the exact uh, technical specification for uh, our DID solution, because our vision here is to. Um, you know, basically, for those who have been who haven't uh, heard about us before, for those who are listening to us for the first time, uh, as OnChain, we are uh, building a DID solution, decentralized uh, self-sovereign identity solution that is based on uh, blockchain technology. Um, our main uh, target audience is, uh, of course, B two B and uh, public institutions, government agencies. Uh, so that uh, each and every citizen out there can have their own uh, self-sovereign identity. Um, for the last few weeks, we have been drafting the technical specification for uh, our POC implementation because uh, we realized that the need in the market is not just uh, specific to self-sovereign IDs, but also the implementation of those IDs. Because if you were to implement a Google sign-in or Apple sign-in right now, um, you would have to go through a few technical steps and for for each uh, new uh, sign-in solution that you're uh, planning to integrate, you have to go through an integration process. So we are uh, overly simplifying this process with uh, just providing a JSON file that is sitting at the top uh, domain level. Um, and uh, we are aiming that each and every website can communicate with each other without requiring any technical uh, implementation other than the main DID implementation. So this is uh, very exciting and uh, we are currently deploying the um, MVP implementation with the municipality of Istanbul. We hope that it's going to be finalized uh, by the end of uh, this month. It's very important and significant for us because uh, Istanbul has 18 million citizens living in it. And every day there's uh, hundreds of different uh, municipality services that are being offered to citizens living in the city, the ones that I wouldn't even be thinking about. So uh, considering that, uh, from that perspective, I think it's really exciting uh, to be the DID provider of one of the largest uh, cities in the world. So we are uh, also excited with the ongoing developments here. Fantastic. I was a little question um, without notice on here, but um, how how would you actually see the um, the on chain and the digital identity actually um, improving the life of um, of citizens in uh, uh, within Turkey? And knowing full well, I'm, I am focusing on Turkey at the moment because obviously that's where you're rolling out. Um, uh, and how do you see it actually going to help? Um, because it's something that can actually go across um, uh, many many countries around the world, if not all. Yeah, the main takeaway uh, from our uh, work here is that uh, Turkey is actually, um, how do I say, very innovative in terms of digital services. I can say that we have one of the best uh, online or e-banking uh, services in the world. Um, I can say we have uh, one of the best e-government applications in the world. So right now, even without going through any government agency, I can get uh, most of the documents uh, signed with e-signatures online within a few seconds, uh, within a few seconds. So in that sense, uh, we just realized that um, while we are doing all these paperless transactions in Turkey, you still have to print out that document you just received and then take it to some, you know, your employ employer or um, any other person who might need that document. So even though the issuance and the verification of those documents or, or that information is digital, you still have to physically transport or send that uh, document to the counterparty that you are uh, interacting with. So our solution uh, more or less solves that problem. Right now, you owning your own identity, you can provide uh, full consent to data access or uh, you know partial consent to data access uh, from any service provider that is storing your data to any other third party service that is going to be consuming that data. Initially, the main problem was uh, the consent. So user had to provide a you know 
sign you know uh, hard copy uh, approval for that data sharing but now we are eliminating that need and the second part is that the integration of those apis because even if uh, that uh, data was uh, available at this moment it takes some time to integrate th that data so we are transforming that approach we are transforming that understanding as well and just by providing labeled data sets uh, in a service file, any third party application can immediately know which type of data that they can query from the uh, source who is storing that data on behalf of the user. So in that sense, we believe that it is going to be bringing the power to the user because now user or the citizens of Istanbul and eventually and hopefully the citizens of Turkey and other countries will have uh, full power or full say over their uh, data. This is very important because if you look at GDPR and uh, other necessary laws that are uh, currently getting more and more popular in the world, even though we own our data, it's not up to us to share it with others or uh, not share it with others. So in that sense, we are making 100% uh, sure that if any data is shared with any third party, user had already explicitly provided consent for that. If not, that data won't be able to get shared. So um, I think in that sense, it is making us uh, understand uh, what we own in this digital world. And hopefully later on, that digital ID could uh, not be limited with the only with uh, only the existing solutions, but also there could be other things that could be built on top of that ID. For example, uh, we are going to be launching an email verification ID uh, towards the end of this month. So your ID could have your email address associated with it without you revealing your email address. So that next time you won't connect your, uh, you won't connect to any other website, that website can now send you an email without actually knowing your email address. So there are also those things that are uh, making us excited about our solution. And potentially you can also um, uh, start verifying emails that are being sent to you using the same process. So it's going to actually make um, uh, uh, potentially significant inroads into reduction of, uh, of spam emails that are, that are going around the world and, and um, hackers sending emails with um, you know, uh, links and all sorts of uh, you know, Trojans, et cetera. Exactly. Just, just let me add one little thing. I know sure. I talked a lot today, but uh, <laughs> the main thing here is um, when you receive an email, it might say that this is like Osman blah blah at Gmail sent you that email. You see that you verify that signature, but that signature is not uh, provided by me. It is provided by Google. And if Google says that it has been sent from my email, then you assume that it was me who sent that email, but it might not be me who sent that email. So, um, and also there is um, another approach uh, to another problem that we usually don't talk about or don't see. Um, the traditional applications, they require you to sign up with your email address, but then they can keep sending you some promotional emails and other informative stuff. Whereas on Web3, when you wallet connect, there is no way for this website or service provider at the end, if you look at it, it's also a business. Uniswap is also a business. OpenSea is also a business, right? There is no way for those platforms to reach you out. There is no way for those platforms to send you an email or a notification. They can only, you know, publish their updates on their websites or socials. If you're not following them, there is no way for them to, you know, uh, get you back to their website. So in that sense, our solution could be helping them reach out their users without uh, compromising the uh, you know uh, privacy of the end user. And and we start seeing a um, uh, you know there's a lot of um, news stories out there at the moment around uh, all these email address uh, lists that have been hacked and all your all your personal details. And I think this goes a very long way towards solving that problem, um, if, if not completely. Um, the way I see it moving in the future is that not only are, are users going to be able to re retain access and control of their data, um, that self-sovereignty, um, it's it's going to cut down on the amount of, um, you know, the, the amount of spam, as I said earlier, um, the amount of, um, of um, you know, uh, hackers trying to intrude in on uh, um, on your uh, your personal data and uh, yeah your your bank your wallet all those sort of things. 
Um, Osman, I might come back to you shortly, but um, uh, I'll jump across to uh, um, uh, to Paul and um, uh, see if we can get a little bit, um, find a little bit more about it. And really, Paul, if you've got a minute, talk about um, uh, how uh, privacy actually relates across to uh, to Carve and um, uh, how you, uh, yeah, you handle consent. Yeah, great question. And the uh, email hacking topic triggered some PTSD. I had my uh, credit card uh, deal with some fraud over the weekend. Um, so going through that process has been, yeah, I'm a little traumatized, but uh, hopefully things will go uh, a little bit better this week. Uh, to your point, you know, how is CARB dealing with privacy? Um, also want to know, Osmond, sounds like you guys are building a hell of a project. Hopefully later in this talk, we can talk about some synergies because I definitely saw a lot of them. But what we're really doing on the, the privacy side, um, yeah, so I mean, it's, it's a little similar to what Osman was describing with, with Omchain, right? So when users are buying these dot .play name services to participate in our campaign, they're also consenting to having their data shared with the games that we work with. So much like earlier when I was talking about user acquisition, if any player uh, shows up in a query for, let's say, shooters, right, they're going to have their data um, uh, shared with that game, for example. Um, and so the way we do it, uh, the way privacy comes in is that Carve doesn't touch any of the raw data. It's all seen in TEE, right? Trusted execution environments. And then we use ZK proofs as well to ensure our, our players' privacy. So they all have to worry about is discovering new games and participating on this, in these campaigns. Uh, what they can get out of this, right, by consenting to share their data, um, they'll earn passive rewards every time a game queries uh, on Carve, right? So the more and more games that we work with, doing user acquisition, the more and more our players can earn uh, just by having their data access. Again, it won't be at each player on Carve, it'll only be the players that are met in the search, right? So if a shooter game is looking for shooter players, well then shooter players will passively earn on Carve uh, and you get the picture there. So that's what we're doing on the, uh, on the privacy side. And then I also commented, uh, let me find it, on the space, um, hold on, a link you guys can go to. I'm gonna pin it here, I think I did it successfully. If you guys click that link, you'll head over to uh, the Carve Protocol page where you can mint what we have, uh, the dot .play name service. It's basically a multi-ID NFT where you can bind like your Steam account, your Carve Play account, your, your MetaMask, and some other socials as well, and participate in our airdrop. And, and you know, by the numbers, we are the hottest airdrop right now. I think it's 400,000 unique active wallets, number two on DAP Radar. And so you guys can go through that link. I'm happy to explain the benefits of having one of those as we go on through the space. But yeah, that's what we're doing on the privacy side. That sounds fantastic, and I think um, uh, as you uh, learn a little bit more about uh, what Layer One X is doing and um, uh, uh, with Omchain, I think some of those uh, capabilities uh, and this is uh, the, introducing those capabilities across the entire Web three space across blockchain. Um, I think probably the biggest thing that comes out of it for me is the uh, the collaboration that that is occurring that just does not occur in in uh, you know traditional Web two. Um, yeah. So um, I think there's uh, certainly a, there's a lot of synergies there between uh, uh, a lot of the work that we're doing. Um, so I think, uh, you know, our, yeah, our, I mean, our listeners will probably see that starting to uh, to come out. On that topic, uh, if I may really quickly, like one thing Please. I already thought of, uh, you know, Omchain's DID could be bound to uh, to the Carve ID, just like we have the Carve Play, the MetaMask, et cetera. And then users could farm more uh, for having that credential added to their Carve account. So it's basically like, what we've built and what what Osmond's building too is that uh, self sovereign identity, right? Taking ownership over your data because he was he was bringing it up a lot uh, when he was speaking. But like in traditional Web two sense, there is no value share for the user's data. It's it's all very centralized and and they don't get anything out of it. So that's what we're trying to do with passive rewards, et cetera. Um, yeah. And uh, dare I say it, some of those uh, big companies out there, the likes of you know the Googles and the Facebooks and everybody else, and uh, yeah. even uh, even X, you know, um, they all own Every single user on here, uh, their data is owned by those companies. Yeah, we're yeah. all on there. And this is what we've got to take back. And I think um, that's the synergy of what we're trying to build um, uh, between uh, between you know, um, all of us, uh, where uh, we're going to start seeing some changes coming through. And they're going to be some pretty radical changes. They might sound very complex to listeners who are... Who are um, uh, who are listening on this going, I don't quite understand that, that's self-sovereign. And um, and just to give people an idea, um, uh, I in, in my past, I've worked across through government organisations and one of the requirements there is ensuring that you have data sovereignty, i.e. your data is held in the country in which you're living um, on, and under the you know the control of that organisation. Um, and that's the, that is also the problem because it's under the control of those organisations. 
giving back that self-sovereignty means that the user takes back that control. They know where their data is. They know who they've shared it with or who they who they want to then you know um, share ongoing or cut it off. You have that ability and that choice. And we start introducing those capabilities. Um, now, can you um, just elaborate a little bit on the mechanisms through which um, Carve actually allows um, users to share um, the, the the value captured from their, their data, from that utility? Yeah, it was... Um... It was kind of what, what I was talking about on the UA side, right? So anytime their okay. data is accessed, they're earning passively, right? There's there's value right there uh, as well. Also, like in the overarching campaign right now called Data to Earn, a bunch of games are launching campaigns underneath that kind of umbrella. And they're all pledging like USDT or token rewards as well. Uh, so yeah, that, that's kind of what's going on. A lot of monet or a lot of ways to earn right now on Carve uh, for consenting and for participating. And that's fantastic. So users actually start receiving a return uh, for their data because it is yep. very valuable. And uh, I think we've done some some guesstimates around that. And um, users' data can be uh, can be worth thousands every year um, to these organisations. So yeah. do, do do the users want to take that back? Well, absolutely. You yeah. Know, why should I mean, we I'm empower at, and let them profit? I'm looking at my balance right now. It's it's not strong. Mine's only ten cents because I mean I'm on the team. I don't really participate on 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 these things that much. But I know there's some users on Carve right now that have uh, you know close to a hundred dollars in this first month. And I want to be clear, like we're not promising, hey, come to Carve and replace your salary or your income, right? But um, you know, as a gamer, if you're going to be playing these games all day anyway, like just at least earning passively from it, like makes a lot of sense. And then. The more and more Carve uh, works with more and more games, the more and more monetization opportunities there will be. They create the value. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I'll jump back across to um, uh, to Osman or uh, Anil, which, whoever wants to uh, to answer. But um, so, as I, you guys are um, uh, are building something that's um, uh, that's extremely unique, and um, we're pretty proud to be uh, to be working with you on that. Um, but. Um, how do how does some um, omchain drive that uh, sustainable um, uh, innovation uh, across Web three? How how do you see things um, uh, progressing from here? Talk a little bit about that, if you could, Osman. I think Anil uh, uh, here could talk yeah, better yeah. about our sustainability approach. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, guys. Um, primarily, um, uh, Chip. Um, uh, primarily, we meticulously map out of every project that's for us delving into the intricacies of business models, partnerships, and startups when engaging in incubation. Uh, following a comprehensive analysis, uh, we determined the sustainability features to integrate into business models, a pivotal aspect of our operations. Our approach, uh, our approach revolves around contributing significantly to any business model, while the term sustainability often invokes talks of environmental policies. Our interpretation extends beyond the environment to encompass commitment, consistency, judicious resource utilization, provisions of complementary services, and fortifying bonds with the community. And then uh, the success of our technology adoption hinges on the provision of consistent commercial models like without cash flow, income generation, engagement, high and then critically, all these elements pre-established, securing investment for a business model becomes daunting task. So uh, these elements are indispensable procedures. Omitting any one could result in failure to capture the attention of community members and stakeholders. And despite the accolades, accolades received for groundbreaking innovations without foundation of solid fundamentals, one may find themselves empty-handed at the end of the day. And our affinity for sustainability and the satisfaction derived from implementing such methodologies and working practices stem, perhaps from our instincts, um, is to reflect a sense of social responsibility and brings a sense of relief to our hearts and minds. When it comes to amalgamating web three and sustainability, we consistently scrutinize every conceivable possibility and potential business model in the upcoming months as we integrate blockchain into commercial ventures. Our methodology seamlessly aligns with a sustainability-centric approach. 
despite occasional forays into detailed exploration due to dearth of blockchain information. And I can say we strive to create a proof of concept and strategic approaches such as determining the necessity of blockchain for business model, the post tokenization process and addressing user friendliness concerns and part of our meticulous process. And I can say finally, our aim is to ensure that the transparency and clarity of the business models we create, facilitating understanding for all stakeholders involved in the commercial model. Thank you there, for the, Anil, for that. Um, and you you actually spoke a little bit about the uh, the commercialization side of it now. And, and I was yeah. speaking really about the government um, aspects of the digital identity. And so what we're really seeing there is um, uh, how a, a solution that's does, that um, uh, that um, that provides that digital identity isn't just related to government. It is also across corporates uh, and, yeah, and exactly, how, you're, how you're allowed to share that data. So what we're doing from a or you're doing from a sustainability point of view is is actually expanding the use cases across not just government, but across those commercial organisations and those, um, and it could be absolutely anything from uh, from healthcare all the way through to, um, uh, you know, to um, retail. Hundred percent. Just I would like to add, uh, add something, and maybe Osman would like to add uh, something more. Um, just I would like to say it might be related to just you know small portion of our business aspect. Like I'm talking about local government, government side. And the procedure takes long time, but if you focus on, except for this government side, like uh, banks, uh, insurance companies, e-commerce companies, or KYC providers, uh, the market, the total addressable market looks promising and excitement for all of us. And uh, yeah, it's the uh, 100% uh, we should focus on, except for local governments, and uh, we should focus on, uh, try to collaborate with banks and insurance companies as well. And uh, we are uh, about to make an uh, agreement uh, with some institutions. I don't want to give any clue about that, but yeah, uh, it looks promising for this technology ID solution. Which is fantastic. Osman, if you want to add yeah. a little. Yeah, yeah I think I think uh, Anil, Anil uh, had explained greatly what we're working on uh, recently. Uh, I just wanted to point out one thing uh, about one of the misconceptions that we have. Um, we usually think that platforms or websites or like, you know, uh, corporates, businesses want to know our personal data. We always think that, oh, they're, you know, watching my phone. They're listening to my conversations. They're, you know, seeing what message that I am sending to my friends. But actually, none of these companies, none of these, you know, businesses that are working with the processed data they don't actually need my name. They don't actually need, um, you know, my age. They don't actually need exactly what I am communicating. So what they need is actually labeled data. So to them, to business owners, actually knowing that it's me is actually costing them money. Because if there is a security breach, if there is a problem, if there is, you know, something specific going on with me, my data, and the you know uh, data policies and laws around and privacy laws, they are being responsible from that data that they are storing. So when we actually talk about our DID solution and saying that hey, we are willing to you know have your uh, data service being separated from your ID service, or hey, the municipality of Istanbul is going to be the authority of the citizens and you can store data without knowing exactly who that person is they immediately jump on. They are immediately onboarded because to them, it's no difference if it's, you know, Osman, blah, 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 and lives in here. They're interested in what I am talking about. They're interested in what I am shopping about, but not to me specifically. They're interested in numbers and statistics and data. They're willing to see how many people are interested in buying uh, red sneakers. They're not interested in who wants to buy a red sneaker. So um, in that sense, I think the ID has... Uh, more applications, at least uh, more applications that are going to be touching to the end user in the B2B world than the government world.
I just realised I was actually on um, uh, on mute. My apologies. Um, so <laughs> here I am talking away. Um, so what I'd like to do is, I guess, um, is throw the question out to Paul about how you can see the synergy. So we've got our Layer One X wallet, um, and maybe how that combined across with um, uh, you know the digital identity that. Um, uh, Omchain are providing across to the Turkish government, and then across the corporate, uh, and then across the gaming world. How you could, how you envision that could actually uh, enhance uh, Carve. So across to you, Paul. Yeah, I mean, sorry for the echo. Um, I mean, uh, look, there, there's several different ways we could do it, right? Is it integrating the Layer X uh, wallet to to be a login method on Carve? It could be that, you know. Um, but also, the more we uh, credentials bound to Carve, the more um, you know we can know on the user, right? As well, especially if it's on chain. One of the segmentations I'm talking about with uh, some games that we work with is like, okay, we can we can see the genre specific stuff, right? The the Web two data, the that behavior. But let's take it even a step further, right? Which NFTs are these guys holding? Are they holding NFTs in your community? Are they big on on this chain, on that chain, etc.? So just getting to know your user even more. And I think Osman was just talking about how they don't care. Um, I forget how you phrased it. They only care who's buying uh, red Nike shoes maybe or whatever it may be. But like that's that's where things get really interesting, right? Because then you could just kind of um, better target the users. So that's where we're going. So I guess to answer your point, Layer 1X and Carve could integrate, you know, wallets together. We could also help, you know, games in your ecosystem scale. Um, and same thing for Omchain. Find that credential to the Carve ID you know, users could have their on-chain, you know, identity, their car play identity, their MetaMask identity, all these different credentials on one, one DID is kind of where we're, where we're going. Yeah, that, which uh, sounds fantastic. And the way we've actually designed uh, the Layer 1X wallet uh, is that it becomes really um, uh, not just a, a wallet. Uh, it is a wallet of wallets. Uh, it's also mm. your digital identity. Uh, it's actually, um, uh, we built it out from just the wallet into uh, the L1X app. Uh, nice. Where those DApps can actually um, uh, can can run within there, whether it's across um, uh, in the DeFi space or in the gaming world, uh, and we've got a number of uh, uh, gaming um, um, uh, uh, projects that are um, uh, in the middle of building on us. So I can I think that could actually bring some uh, some huge synergies uh, between us. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean that's that's the low hanging fruit, right? We do with a uh, you know a lot of chains that we work with. Um, for example, like. Uh, God, I can't believe this hasn't been announced yet, but I mean, there's been tweets about it from Jiho and, and myself, but we're, we're on Ronin and uh, we drove over, um, I think the number is 300,000 users on uh, to Ronin, uh, right? So we really uh, boosted their uh, monthly active users, right? In terms of wallets, which uh, I think they broke one mil. A, lo a large part of that was because of us. And so that word's kind of gotten out and I've had a lot of influx and inbound from some of our relationships at these ecosystems like, yo, you know, or can you guys add this to uh, our uh, our chain to to support on Carve? Because a lot of these people want a piece of the pie. For example, we we did Linea last week. I think we're working with Linea now, which is consensus, right? And we're the number one DAP on Linea with over forty thousand wallets. So, yeah, would be happy to explore working with Layer One X and and any chain out there. Um, I think people, yeah, people like Carve. So, we're doing something right. I think. Fantastic. Um, and I think um, one of the other capabilities that we have is the ability to be able to transact cross-chain uh, without yeah. using a bridge. Now, uh, and that also includes NFTs. So you're able to actually put um, NFTs up on multiple marketplaces at the same time. You know, um, nice. NPC, Blue dot, Blur dot IO, and Magic Eden, etc., or any any really any uh, marketplace. And I think the capability that offers back across to uh, uh, to projects such as yourself is actually uh, quite fantastic. Um, I think, uh, if I may, sorry, that's even more valuable to uh, to users because you know everyone yeah. talks about uh, you know adoption this, adoption that, but you know the the typical I'll keep it gaming focused because cars gaming focused. They don't care what chain they're on, right? Um, they, they just want to play uh, fun games, and I think that's that's we're seeing it now with Power World, right? Uh, you know, a million concurrent players or whatever it may be, no blockchain in whatsoever. I, like people will go where the fun products are. So if you can dumb down all the technical stuff they need to care about to like basically nothing and they just can f play fun products. Yeah, that's a really cool solution you guys have. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think um, going back to our CXO, um, you makes the uh, the statement around, um, uh, you know, it has to be easy, so easy that grandma can use it. And, he, and yeah. I think in that statement, it's been around a little while now and um, uh, it might make people uh, laugh a little bit, but but it's real, you know. Um, I, I sit there and I try and explain it across to my uh, to my father what we're doing and he, and he, he doesn't get it. But 
we go back a you know um, a whole bunch of years, and um, they had the same problem when uh, when transferring across from the old um, bank passbooks into um, uh, electronic accounts. This is really where we're going: is that we've we've reached a point with all of the the amount of data that's actually sitting out there around the world, how we secure it, how we actually give back that ownership to uh, to the users and and safeguard it at the same time. But it's not just across some um, uh, you know the 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 DeFi space or, or even uh, traditional finance, it is across every aspect. So it's across the gaming side of it. People want to be able to live, live safely, um, to uh, to be able to go out there and, um, uh, you know, um, go whether they're going to the library and they need their ID for that, whether they're getting on a bus or whether they're playing a game. You know, you don't, um, you know, whether they're an artist, they create those NFTs for the game, uh, you know, a skin of some sort or a, or a weapon or anything else like that. Those items become absolutely paramount in the, uh, in, in the current world. Um, yeah, I so, think uh, you you yeah. also brought up uh, an interesting point. Like uh, th this, uh, it also becomes a little bit more convenient uh, as well. Uh, but you have you have to safeguard your privacy as well with any of these technological advancements. Don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but I think uh, yeah, super exciting times uh, right now. Totally, totally agree. So, um, in in terms of user experience, uh, Paul. How do you see um, your solution making life easier for um, for users, for your gamers, for uh, in fact, for anybody? Yeah, a hundred percent. Okay, I think there's a couple different ways to answer this. I think I'll start here. Basically, I think uh, user flow, like game discoverability, is important, especially like uh, for the gamer finding new games. It's happened a bunch on Carve. Just someone who comes across something organically, or it's a quest, and they fall in love with the game. I think that's you know, a great flow, but something we're integrating and, and always improving. Uh, and I feel like it's the hot new buzzword, but we're, we're looking at using AI to, to improve this process, right? Getting pushed a suggestion as a user before even, uh, you know, realizing it's out there for you. So that that's something exciting as a user, I think. But also we, we have uh, worked with like Particle Network um, as well to, for this dot play name service. Like you can sign in and get your own account abstraction wallet rather than, you know, worrying about a MetaMask and seed phrases and everything. That will really help onboard some users, right, who aren't so Web3 native. But also, you know, you can log in with a social account on Carve. All this stuff's in place. Um, doing more stuff to, to make the user flow great. Because, I mean, we have a great community. Um, 1.5 million registered users. About 80% of them are what we call Web3 uh, native. The other 20% are Web3 curious. But we need to remember, like, Web3 is such a bubble. There's only so many amount of eyeballs and so many amount of users we as Carve and, and also as a industry need to do better at reaching outside this bubble and going for the uh, the traditional game or the traditional, you know, internet enjoyer. They, they're they still out there. And I think with the market improving these past few weeks, retail is going to come in. Everyone's going to look to sink their teeth into something cool. So it's coming for sure. Absolutely. I might um, jump across to uh, uh, to Osman now and um, just get a little bit of a, an update um, uh, and a bit of an overview or, or an ill, whoever wants to talk about it, um, uh, how you see um, Omchain making um, uh, the digital identity solution um, uh, more accessible and user friendly um, for both for those that are technical, but also the non-technical audience. So really those traditional um, uh, um, users. Uh, I think I can answer to that uh, and then I can uh, hand over to Anil. Uh, so basically the main uh, point here is that we want it to be working as uh, similar to HTTPS as possible. You use Google Chrome or, you know, Opera, Firefox, whatever browser you have, you don't realize that this technology is embedded. But until you go to some website that is using the HTTP protocol and then your browser just simply tells you that the, your connection is not secure. Yeah. So we want it to be as simple as that uh, for the end user because at the end, the end users, uh, we don't expect them to understand fully from the cryptography. We don't uh, expect them to understand uh, fully from the technical details, but we want uh, them to simply use a safe and secure product. And if they want to learn more about it, then they can go uh, dive deep into that. So our approach is to integrate this protocol, integrate this uh, private key generation and uh, signing capabilities into uh, mobile applications of our clients, like a banking application, it's, you know, the finance application, your mobile banking application that you have been using for uh, many years now. 
but now it comes uh, with Web3 capabilities or your cities, municipalities, mobile application, but now it comes with your digital identity uh, embedded into it so that there is no friction in terms of uh, user experience so that users don't have to necessarily, you know, download MetaMask or any other third party wallet application. Which is fantastic. Thank you, Osman. Um, and I, that actually brings up a, an interesting point about um, uh, when you do um, uh, talk about verifying accounts and, and ensuring securities there. And that's one of the capabilities that we're we're building. And that is around being able to, and I describe it as circular security, where each of the, so within, for example, the LowerNex uh, wallet, that you actually, you, you might bring in your MetaMask wallet, and you bring in all your others, and uh, you've got other solutions there as well as connectivity across to the likes of, um, uh, you know, products like Facebook or um, LinkedIn or any of those. And for those products, instead of just having a, a simple two-factor authentication, and, you know, people describe that as pretty much the minimum these days, but to be able to take it to another level where all of those apps and your wallets are all authenticating one another, um, so you really have that circular security of, of authentication in there. And we're just in, looking to increase that the safety, the reliability, uh, and the speed of those um, uh, of those solutions, and that also applies across to uh, the gaming side of it. And, and uh, uh, Paul, with your uh, the Calf solution, how they can actually uh, your your solution could actually become a, a part of that um, authentication process um, and safeguarding it for the users. Um, and um, I'll throw a question out there to Paul about um, how do you see. Um, uh, the Carve solution um, moving forward in the future. The, what, what's the landscape look like for you guys um, uh, with your your future plans? Yeah, the uh, the age old alpha question. Talk about our future roadmap. <laughs> yes, um, we're gearing up to do uh, to do TGE. Right, that's why we've kind of taken these steps and rolled out this airdrop campaign. When TGE, as I get uh, asked like a hundred times a day. I can't tell you when we're planning on it, but it should be before the end of Q1. All I can say to our users is, you know, keep farming your soul. You'll be able to exchange that uh, for uh, uh, our token after TGE. But other things we're gearing up for. Yeah, I think, you know, leading partnerships on Carve, uh, always looking for great games. And I think we're finally in the year where games funded in the past one, two to three years are, are finally coming to the market. So there's going to be a lot of new game partners we can work with on the UA side. Um, that's always exciting. We're closing a Series A. Um, you know, on the fundraising side, that's going really well. I don't know how much detail I can go into, obviously, but that's going really well too. Um, and then moving forward, really want to pour like lighter fluid on on the carve machine and hire key talent um, in the engineering and product side of things to keep expanding this carve protocol and let us do all the cool things we've talked about today, like integrating layer 1x integrating on chain working with cool products like you guys that's definitely the focus moving forward um and then just really becoming the uh the go-to ua platform i like to say we are now but um there's still some milestones i need to achieve uh as a partnerships lead to to get us there there's still some big fish in the gaming world we need to work with and some big ecosystems as well so checking those boxes off making sure we have a stellar token launch becoming a big market cap coin so i can retire young and and move to japan and and just, I don't know, watch watch anime all day and look at pretty girls. I think that's my dream. So that's what we got going on in 2024. Fantastic. I love hearing the stories about what um, what people are wanting to do um, uh, yeah, once, they, uh, once they reach there. And I think, um, you know, this is where it comes in is that uh, being able to have these conversations and um, so, many of, so many times and how many conversations I've had over the last uh, couple of years with uh, projects and chains um, and what I'm enjoying the most is is actually being able to get out there and talk to these projects um, uh, about um, the the solutions that we each provide and those capabilities. And as an infrastructure um, solution that is uh, providing that interoperability between all the all the various uh, chains, you know, and we're connected to Ethereum, BSC, Avalanche, Polygon, Solana, yeah. which is non EVM, Arbitrum, Optimism, and Phantom, and but which is great it's fantastic to be able to transact between those to be able to provide that um uh, the interoperability the, the decentralization but the key is really those other solutions those layer two pro projects those products like um uh, uh om chain and carve and how we can actually bring those together and those partnerships are going to be absolutely crucial for the future it's something that you don't see in the traditional world, uh, in, in traditional business. They're all fighting against one another for uh, for their position. Whereas we take a, a different approach that let's unite them all together. 
Um, and those products and solutions that actually have true capability, they will absolutely shine. Um, and, you know, we're, we're also giving back that ownership to the uh, to the end user. And I think that's absolutely important that people see that decentralization is actually real, that we can actually provide something that um, takes away from those big corporates. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, so what I'd like to do is um, uh, probably, um, I think we're um, heading towards the end of time and um, I know I've got another um, uh, um, meeting with one of our other projects coming up very shortly, but um, maybe, um, uh, Osman, if I jump across to you for a minute about um, how, the, how um, the community can get involved in, um, uh, in OmChain or support it um, and understand a little bit more about uh, your solution. I know we've had a number of talks, but it's really good to get on there again and, uh, and, and speak and uh, showcase uh, showcase on chain and then we'll jump across to uh, carve as well i think one of the things we can uh do right now is to uh once we launch this uh in email address verified dids because they are also nfts um sorry about that um because they are also nfts um what we can do is we can once we have integrated this by the end of this month um we can have car integrated with our DIDs so that users who are holding our DIDs could also integrate that to their car profiles and car users who wish to verify their email email addresses and get an email verified badge can do so from our platform. Because eventually, um, if you're an application that is willing to, you know, distribute some airdrops, that is willing to, you know, open up some, you know, poll, some competition, you have to go through email verification, but users might not be feeling uh, very comfortable sharing that information with you. So we already have, we are going to be having um, email verified DIDs. So this is already providing some, how do I say, pre-approved user base for the upcoming games that Carve might be integrating to. So I think this is one of the things that we can technically work on and deliver uh, by the end of this month or maybe early February, I think. Chief, if you're speaking, you're, you are... I've done again it again, mute, haven't I? I yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It was great laughs> Thank you, that. gentlemen. Uh, you see it? It, sorry, um, so good to actually hear that, uh, Osman. And start, we start seeing all of the um, synergies in that... Um, uh, the the collaboration that occurs in uh, in this space um, and uh, Paul, so I'll throw it out to you about um, uh, how um, you know our listeners can get in, get involved with uh, with Carve. How, uh, how to get involved with us? Yes, so open it up to uh, you know where, where do they find um, uh, some more about you? Um, um, oh, okay, got you, got you, got you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, our Twitter that it's in here in the space, Carve underscore official. That's a good starting point. You can find. I think we use Linktree. I'm not too sure to find all of our accounts. Yep. It's uh, carve.io slash play. That's the requesting and discovery site, but you, you could do just slash protocol to find the uh, airdrop and everything there. Um, you know, if you're looking to work with us, my DMs are open. It's my name on Telegram, Paul DeLeo. Easy to slide in. I will say, um, you know, we talked about a lot about a lot of cool things, the Layer X collaboration, the collaboration with Omchain, et cetera. As a business development guy, and I'm sure you guys may know this too, we talk about all these cool things, but then we get told by our product and engineering team that they can't do it right now. So I will say we're ready to, to do work with you guys, but it's going to take the engineers some time. I know they have their own timeline as well, but I make so many grand promises and then I get brought back down to earth. There's a timeline and manpower that needs to be allocated. Paul, never give up. Keep pushing them. Um, <laughs> Look, working with um, uh, with uh, Kevin, our founder, um, uh, you know, he's he works so hard to be able to try and achieve this with his team uh, on the development side. So, you know, we, we go to him with all, you know, can you do this? When can you do it by? And so, so used to, uh, to, to having those conversations and I know what they're like. Um, but yeah. they're so so enjoyable when you actually come out with a solution and people start seeing it. Yeah, you know, and we've just gone from being, uh, you know, at providing that, uh, the, the, the base infrastructure to, to actually providing the wallet and the... Um, uh, the old one X app and then being able to bring those other projects in as well is probably key uh, uh, in, into uh, into the solution. So we look forward to um, uh, to having further chats there, Paul, about um, uh, how we can yep. move it forward. And, and the same with Osman, the, the work that we're doing with you is, um, I think it's been uh, absolutely, I can only describe it as revolutionary. Um, and when you, when you look at, um, uh, you know, the, 
the um, the costs associated with government services uh, and corporate services as well, and I've worked across all of them. Um, it's it's absolutely mind blowing the amount of money that they spend on these. Um, and when you start introducing blockchain type solutions, it's amazing how much uh, easier and cheaper it is for uh, for these organisations to uh, to implement. Uh, and the same on the gaming side, really, as well, is that Web three gaming is only going to get adopted uh, strong adoption. Uh, when it becomes easy to use, becomes mainstream. And I think um, the, the, the things that you've spoken about tonight, Paul, is, uh, is, is actually taking that in absolutely the right direction. Hell yeah. Um, I'm very bullish on the gaming vertical. Uh, you know, I grew up playing games. It's a dream come true to be working in games. Um, but it's also funny. I, I thought, you know, hey, working in games, maybe I'll be able to play a little bit more, but now I play less than I ever have in my life. Uh, yep. But yeah, I definitely think gaming makes a lot of sense for Web3. It's just uh, people, like the DeFi stuff, You it may be too confusing, right? But like gaming, it just makes sense. So owning my own assets, that's something I've wanted to do my entire life. I mean, like, look, a couple years ago with the new Warzone and Call of Duty, all your assets are gone for good. Like, come on. Like, it just makes sense for, for the gamers. So as long as we can frame it as, um, you know, that what I was just saying and not, oh, NFT this, NFT that, because that like has a scam connotation and, and rightfully so. There's a lot of bad actors in the space. Yep, no, absolutely. And um, just just touch on a little bit of um, of ancient history here. Um, and I do use the word ancient probably because I'm a bit old myself, but um, uh, going back to probably my first game being the likes of Pong, which uh, most people probably haven't heard of, um, or um, or even the likes of King's Quest. I don't know if you remember back to that, if you've ever, depending on how old you are. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah, I, oh, I, I'm, a, I'm 96. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I'm a little... No, I'm still pretty young. I'm still pretty young. Uh, 96, so, yeah, I started with, uh, I think I said Pokemon Yellow. Grew up on the GameCube, PS2, Game Boy Advance, Golden Era. So much fun. But, wow. yeah, no, those those are a little older than me, brother. Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. Yeah, look, I go back a little ways than, uh, than you guys. <laughs> been great, yeah, showing my age. <laughs> Definitely, but gentlemen, I do thank you for your time tonight. And um, uh, Osman, I'll throw it to you. Do you have any um, uh, anything you want to add uh, in closing, or a nil? Uh, I would like to say something, uh, Chief. Um, thank you so much for having us. And uh, as we embark on this uh, transformative journey into digital age, digital age stands at the forefront, promising a future when convenience meets security. So, guys, gentlemen, uh, keep an eye out for new developments and innovations in the field of blockchain, for, in the field of digital ID, for they are key to unlocking a world where your identity seamlessly integrates with digital landscape. Exciting times, promising times lie ahead as technology continues to evolve and shape the way we authenticate, connect, and experience the digital realm. Stay tuned for the future of digital identity is not just a concept. It's a dynamic force that would redefine the way we navigate our increasing into connected world. Cheers, chaps. Thank you so much, Chief. You're very welcome. And it's real. That's probably the key. Um, and I'll throw it to, to Paul. Uh, anything you want to add for the uh, to, to close? I talk a lot. Um, I really appreciate you know you guys have me on. It's always a joy to do the AMAs. Um, you know, great panelists of speakers uh, from Larex and and from Omchain. Uh, there's a lot of cool builders in the space building cool things. So I implore the audience to to check it out for sure. Um, Carve no better time than to sign up now. Too many monetization opportunities. The airdrop opportunity. Um, you know, having sovereignty over your data, finding fun games. If you're a gamer, you need to be on Carve. It doesn't matter if it's Web three or Web two. That'll be my closing uh, statement. Thanks again to you guys and, and the audience for tuning out. You're very welcome, Paul. And uh, Osman and Anil, thank you so much for your time tonight. And um, I think uh, I'll just add in there that uh, Layer X, we've also got our airdrop out there and uh, our um, uh, public sale is closing off very, very shortly. So, um, uh, yeah, don't miss it. But thank you again, gen gentlemen, for your time tonight. Yeah, just on an ending note, uh, I would like to remind people that uh, in Layer 1X Discord, we have uh, lots of competitions going where you can participate and win Layer 1X tokens. Uh, the link to the Discord will be in our bio. And uh, if you think there are any projects that would like to come up uh, to do an AMA with us or any influencers out there, then fill out the Xbox AMA form that I have linked in the comments section. Uh, thank you for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. We will see you again in the next episode of X Talks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Let's go.